Hello everyone, it's Phil here from 1 to 1 IELTS. Today I am going to provide you with what I really think is the best note taking strategy uh, that is out there for IELTS speaking part two. Now, I've been having a look on the internet and I've been doing a bit of research and there's really not very many good strategies for part two out there. Um, there are aspects of some of these strategies uh, that other YouTubers and teachers have made, which are quite good, uh, but I don't think any of them make a really good cohesive strategy uh, that helps students make sure that they've got a good structure, but also really feel confident that they're gonna speak for two minutes. So today, first off, I'm gonna show you some do's and don'ts, and then we're gonna move in to the strategy section. So you get one minute to take notes in speaking part two. So there are a couple of things that you really do not want to be doing. So the first thing that a lot of students will do is just write sentences that they want to read later. You're never gonna be able to do this. It's absolutely impossible to write uh, a script for a two minute uh, speaking exam in one minute. It's just not going to happen. Uh, and if you do start reading your notes, uh, it's not very natural. You know, it's meant to be a speaking exam, not a reading exam. You shouldn't be focusing on the exact content. So we're not gonna talk about exactly what we're gonna talk about. We're, we're gonna be taking notes on areas that we wanna be talking about rather than the exact um, sp specifics of what we're gonna talk about. Don't freeze, like a lot of students will go, oh no, I don't know about this topic, how am I ever gonna talk about it for two minutes? If you follow the strategy I give you, you can get busy and you're not gonna be uh, freezing. And the other thing that I see a lot of students do, and we really don't wanna do this, is don't finish your note taking early. Okay, so you're giving a minute, uh, as an examiner, I always find it fascinating when students after 30 seconds go, I'm ready, it seems very arrogant to um, say, okay, I don't need this time. We're gonna use all of the time to the best of our ability. Okay, so let's have a look at some things that you really do want to do. So the first thing I'd really recommend doing is take notes about the structure. And this is the structure that I'm gonna uh, show you in a minute. Second, we're gonna take notes about verb tense. So, Often you'll find the questions asking you about um, the past tense, uh, something you did in the past. If that's the case, I see lots of students make mistakes with the past tense. If I'd ask them specifically, what is the past tense of a certain verb? They'd, they'd know what that, that verb is in the past tense, but because they've got so many things going on in their head, they're nervous, uh, they quite often start speaking in the present rather than the past. Just having that visual reminder that says past is a really good way of making sure that you get your verb tenses correct. And third, we want to be uh, taking notes on topic specific vocabulary if there's time. So the structure is the first and most important thing. Writing down the tense only takes us a second. We're gonna be writing present, past or future. And then um, we can start thinking about vocabulary with the rest of our time. And that's how we're gonna make sure that we use our time to the best of our ability. So let's get on and have a look at the structure. So this was originally taken from an idea from Chris Pell at IELTS Advantage, uh, where he actually advises students not really to worry about um, the bullet points and come up with these ideas. Uh, so you introduce a general topic, you describe it, you give your opinion about it. Uh, he then said, give an example, talk about the past, present and future. So I think something we can definitely add to this is just comparing and contrasting. This is something that uh, the speaking test in IELTS tests you on quite a lot of your ability to compare and contrast. So it's nice to actually um, show the examiner that this is something you can do on your own without being prompted. Now, rather than ignoring the bullet points, we're gonna use the bullet points uh, to help us. And that was the whole purpose of the bullet points being put in the exam in the first place. The bullet points are probably the easiest things to talk about on the topic 
that we don't really want to be ignoring them. Sure, you don't have to answer every single one of them, but it is going to make our life a lot easier actually looking at them. And it's also going to help us have a nice um, solid structure. So let's have a look what I mean. That it comes uh, to your test and you get this question. So describe a time when you organized a happy event successfully. You should say what the event was, how you prepared for it, uh, who helped you to organize it, and explain why you think it was a successful event. So we have three bullet points here, and like this further extra question at the end. Wonderful, so the question's already given us a bit of help, so we know, okay, we can talk about what this event was, you know, how we were preparing, and who we did it with. Um, but personally, if you know, I'm sitting in the exam, I'm nervous, I mean, I'm not going to speak for two minutes about these three areas by just answering them directly. So what we need to do is we need to expand these bullet points to make our life a little bit easier. And this is where our strategy here for part two comes in and really is a very simple strategy that you can apply to any question if it's a hard or easy. So the very first thing we're going to have to do is think of an idea. So what idea could we have for a happy event uh, that you organise successfully? This is up to you. I'm honestly, I'm just going to make it up. I find it much easier with these questions rather than, you know, if something comes to mind, great. Otherwise, I can just make it up. Uh, not a problem. Here, the idea I had, I was just thinking, what's, what's something what's happy? Um, a wedding reception. Okay, let's uh, do my brother's because you don't normally organize your own wedding reception. So I thought, okay, let's have a look at my brother's wedding reception. Um, and the very first thing we're going to do is just introduce a topic. Okay, so we can talk about wedding receptions, whether you've ever organized anything before, um, general things like this. Now let's get to our strategy. So Bullet point number one, what the event was. Now, looking at our structure, we've got lots of options that we can add to this. And this is the, what we want to be writing uh, in that one minute. So we've got, okay, what the event was. And I think, can I describe the event? So can I describe uh, my brother's wedding reception? Definitely, I can talk about um, where it was, uh, when it was, um, who my brother got married to, um, what type of day it was. Um, so lots of things I can describe here. So that's what I'm going to write in my notes. I'm not going to talk about each one, like uh, the person my brother got married to. Hopefully I know the person my brother got married to, uh, where it was. I should know these things. I don't need to write them down. All I'm writing is describe. So now we go on to our next one, opinion. Well, can I give my opinion? Uh, do I think I did a good job? Um, what, was it easy? Um, there's all sorts of things I could give my opinion about with um, the event. So yeah, definitely, I, I can add an opinion here. Again, I don't need to have exactly um, my opinion of, I liked it, uh, it was great, I'm one of the, none of that needs to be written. That's something you can come up with when you look at the word opinion. Compare and contrast. Can I compare this event to other events? Yeah, that'd be really easy. I can compare it to um, weddings that I've gone to in the past, um, weddings I've seen on TV. So I could definitely compare and contrast. Example. Uh, can I give an example of something that happened uh, during the event? Possibly. You might find this difficult. I think I could maybe give an example here. So I would write example. Past, present and future. Well, what the event was, not really. I'm not really going to be com uh, comparing the past, present and future of what the event was. So for me personally, I'm not going to put these down. I think they don't really apply here. Then we move on to the next, and we basically do the same thing again. Um, 
How are you prepared for it? Okay, can I describe uh, preparing this event? Um, yep, I think that's gonna be pretty easy. Yeah, I'm just gonna say what I did to prepare it, um, whether it was difficult, uh, where I prepared it, how long it took me to prepare it. Um, all of these things that I can use for describing. Think about what words, um, so WH words like where, why, when, um, who. I could definitely also put who in here, but I noticed that the next bullet point is talking about who, so I'm gonna leave that to the next bullet point. Um, again, can I give my opinion about preparing it? You know, did I enjoy it? Would I like to do it again? Uh, I think I can definitely put my opinion in there. Shouldn't be too difficult. Um, how are you prepared for it? Could I give an example? Um, yeah, oh, um, compare and contrast. Uh, can I compare and contrast it to maybe something else I've prepared in the past? Yep, I can do that. And could I give an example of what I did? Yep. Past, present, or future? Um, well, we said about comparing and tr contrasting, so maybe uh, we've already done this, but if you haven't compared and contrast, you can maybe talk about how you would prepare it differently in the future. Uh, and again, maybe past and present, you don't feel comfortable talking about. So, okay, future, I can definitely mention about how I would uh, prepare it, prepare a um, event again in the future. Who helped you organize it? Easy, anytime it says who, you should love these questions. It's very easy to describe people. Uh, so, describe, definitely, uh, give your opinion about them. You know, were they helpful? Uh, definitely give our opinion. Compare and contrast to other people we know, definitely. Uh, give an example of something that they did in particular. Yeah, maybe, again. If you come to this part of the exam and suddenly go blank, it's like, oh, I can't think of an example, then don't worry about it, move on to your next thing. The important thing is that we've got a structure to follow. Um, and then uh, past, present, future. I could maybe talk about um, when I met this person in the past. Um, in the future, would I work with them again? So I think that's possible. And explain why you think it was successful. So again, we're gonna describe why it was successful. And I think I'm just gonna stop there. And now we're gonna have a look back and see quite how much information we're going to be able to talk about. So let's say on average, we could probably talk about each of these ideas for about 10 seconds. So what the event was, we've got 10 seconds for description, 10 for opinion, uh, for compare and contrast, and 10 for example, that's 40 seconds. Uh, how you prepared it, 10 seconds, opinion, 10 seconds, uh, pair of guitars, 10 seconds, example, 10 seconds, future, 10 seconds. Well, there we got 50. So we're up to a minute and a half already. Uh, who helped you organize it? Well, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Oh, wow, we've got a minute there. Describe. We've at the moment got three minutes of things to talk about. Now, at this point, we don't have to worry at all because we're going to be stopped by exa the examiner after um, two minutes. You don't have to talk about every point. You don't have to get to the end of your speech. You know, the key is language, that you demonstrate you're able to continually speak for two minutes. This structure is giving you the way to do that. But rather than what a lot of students do is um, they meander, they go from one place to the other to the other, because they haven't got any structure, because uh, they're just coming, okay, this idea, now this idea. With this structure, your ideas are going to be incredibly well organized, so you're gonna have a wonderful structure. Now, I think when I'm doing this myself, I'm thinking, okay, describe, opinion, compare, contrast. To write all this down, it's probably gonna take me about hmm, 30 seconds. Maybe it took me five or 10 seconds to come up with an idea here for the reception. Let's say we're on 40 seconds. Uh, the main tense, describe a time you organize, so it's in the past. 
Okay, so let's say we're up to 45 seconds. We have 15 seconds left. What are we gonna do? We're gonna think about vocabulary. What vocabulary can I use? So what phrasal verbs maybe? So, um, okay, I see the word who. Uh, so who, we've got get along, because uh, we can say we got to get along well with the person who helped us organize it, or maybe didn't get along well. Uh, but a nice phrasal verb we got there. Um, we could think, you know, are we good at something? Are we good at organizing it? So there's some vocabulary we could think about for uh, weddings. So we could talk about the bride, that's topic specific, uh, the groom, uh, bridesmaids, uh, maid, maid of honor maybe. So these kind of words are very topic specific and will be impressing um, the examiner as you go along. With this, you can see that we've made full use of our time. We've got a good structure. We know the tense we're talking about. We have some vocabulary that we can refer to. And we shouldn't now be struggling or in it at all worried about speaking for two minutes. So I hope you can use this in your exams. I hope that you find this useful. Uh, good luck to you in your studies. Hope you're all having a great week. Talk to you soon.